sorry guys, I haven't made a video in a while, but I'll be coming some videos. First and foremost, this is a video on Andre Berto. First of all, shout outs to BoxRec, BoxRec.com for revamping their site. Looks really good. And we're gonna look at Andre Berto. Now, why am I looking at Andre Berto? Well, um, I, I know I need to look at more fighters, but Mr. Floyd Mayweather, he mentioned Andre Berto as a possible opponent. And a lot of people laughed about that. Now, I don't take Floyd Mayweather seriously about this opponent. But what I found interesting is that not too far long ago, about four years ago or five years ago, people took Andre Berto very seriously as a possible opponent for Floyd Mayweather Jr. What I want to do is just look at his box rec. Now, I know box rec doesn't really tell you the full story. As I've always been saying to you guys, you really look at the fights these guys do. Go watch fights. When you watch fights, it tells a lot more about a fighter than, you know, his record. You know, you don't really look at records because records tell you what opponent you faced, what their record was, and when. Those kind of things. But really, looking at the actual fights gives you the details. Even when you see somebody knocked out an opponent, that doesn't necessarily mean that the opponent was knocked out. It could be that the opponent had to, the fight was stopped on cuts. It could have been that the opponent was live, but they got disqualified. There's so many different variables, okay? So remember, box records, as we all know, and even the records of opponents, doesn't really tell the true picture. If you want a better picture, you really got to watch the fights. You got to take time and watch all the fights of this particular person if you really want to truly assess a fighter, all right? And also, what the fights do, of course, if you could get into the ring with that fighter, that is the best assessment you could. That's why you hear Roger Mayweather say, y'all don't know shit about boxing, or you would hear somebody like Floyd Mayweather say, have you ever boxed before? Because boxing involves so so many different things that's why i myself i'm going to actually enter into a boxing competition and actually compete with other boxers in about two to three years time from now i'm seriously thinking about applying myself to the discipline of boxing to really understand because if you haven't boxed in a competition before any competition whatsoever you really don't know shit about boxing and i i have to say right now i don't know shit about boxing okay I'm being honest with you guys, but as a casual fan, I just want to enlighten people on what I've learned about boxing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to edit this video, okay? So let me go into Andre Berto for a minute because I, I think people forgot about this guy. And the other guy I'm going to look at in another video is Kareem Mayfield. And I want to put some shine on these guys, even if they don't fight Floyd Mayweather, which is mostly likely they're not going to fight him. But I want to put shine on them because this is a moment to put spotlight on certain fighters. People are laughing about Andre Berto because people found out the blueprint to beat him. But that does not mean that Andre Berto did not earn that right for people to say he was a great fighter. Now, here's why. Let's go through his record. Let's just go through uh, some of the fighters he faced, which are notable fighters. And you'll see that this guy, he earned his stripes. Okay, sometimes he got decisions he shouldn't have gotten, but he earned his stripes. So the first person that we have to mention here that's of note is David Estrada. He won his NABF welterweight title from David Estrada. And Berto has been... A true welterweight. He has been at welterweight all of his career. He began his career actually at super welterweight, and then he moved down to welterweight. So he's a big dude. Had He has great punching power, and he has sharp technique. So he's, a, he's really a great guy. But his first win was against David Estrada. Okay? And then he competed for the vacant WC world title, and he defended against Steve Forbes. Now, for those people who don't know, Steve Forbes is a skilled um, having that uh, Midwest style 
that makes him difficult. He, his offense is not the greatest in the world, and I think that's mostly why he loses fights. But he fought Steve Forbes, and he really, that fight, Andre Brodo showed that he could box reasonably well against Steve Forbes. This is where we understood that he was a boxer, and that's why we call him a boxer puncher. All right? And he learned a lot from that fight. Then he went on to fight Louis Colazzo. Now, in this time, Louis Colazzo, late in his career, is not seen as anybody that great, okay? But Louis Colazzo, back in the day, was a difficult southpaw for any fighter. He, 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 he was a difficult fight for Shea Mosley. He was a difficult fight for a number of different people. So back in the day, in 2009, Louis Colazzo faced Andre Berto. And that was a test Andre Berto passed. It was a difficult test for him. Even though he had a unanimous decision win over Louis Colazzo, the fight was actually closer than uh, that decision is saying. All the judges scored it for Colazzo, but it was very, very slim. And if you look, Larry Ingle had it 114-113, and Gary Ritter had it 114-113. And Bill Clancy, I don't know what was wrong with that judge. <laughs> I don't know where he was, <laughs> what planet he was on, but okay. Now, here's the other win. Not only did he get a win over this dude, he knocked him out. And this was once a former WBC World Welterweight Champion, Carlos Quintana. Okay? He knocked out Quintana in the eighth round of that fight. Okay? So, when we talk about Andre Berto, you see already he has four really premier names on his record. David Estrada, Steve Forbes... Louis Colazzo and Carlos Quintana. That's four big names. This is why people started to hype Andre Berto. Okay? Then this undefeated Andre Berto came face to face with Victor Ortiz. And Ortiz dropped him in the first round. Discombobulated him. He came back in the second round and dropped Victor Ortiz. And then later on in the fight, somewhere around the sixth round, Ortiz dropped him again, and then he dropped Victor Ortiz again in a very, very exciting match. So you have to understand that Andre Berto also brought excitement. He loved to bang. He loved to box. He got in love with his power too much, and he liked to bang more than he would box. But the boy had some skill. And before this fight, people were clamoring to see Andre Berto face Floyd Mayweather Jr., they also wanted An uh, Manny Pacquiao to face Floyd Mayweather Jr. But they were interested in, in a black boxer who had a style like Floyd Mayweather fighting him. They did the same thing with Adrian Broner when he was undefeated and plowing true divisions and getting titles. Okay? So, to that point where he faced Victor Ortiz, Andre Berto, the media, the press, the people, wanted him to come face to face with Floyd Mayweather Jr. And because Victor Ortiz beat this undefeated Andre Berto convincingly, he ended up fighting Floyd Mayweather Jr. Okay? Now, let's fast track four years into the future to the present day. During that journey, he beat Jan Zavik then he went on to a retire to dude because Andre Berto had serious power. When he faced Robert Guerrero, he faced a dude that came at him like very intensely, mauling action, sort of like um, uh, what happened with Adrian Broner versus Sean Porter. Mauling action on the inside, fighting him, not giving him space, roughhousing him like Marcus McDonough and Robert Guerrero, rough, ruffian, tough southpaw, who took it to distance, puffed up Andre Berto's face, knocked him down a couple times, Berto fought back at uh, Guerrero in a rough and rugged fight in which he busted up Guerrero's face. It was a fight of the year. Then he went on to face the fight after for the vacant NABF welterweight title, Jesus Soto Carras, in a great, great fight in which he was he knocked down Cor uh, Soto Carras in the 11th round, and then Soto Carras dropped him in the 12th, the final round, he dropped him. As Berto's arm had given out and he couldn't fight, he had to fight with the other arm. It was a great, great, great fight. Okay? Just like Keith Thurman versus Soto Carras. Just like Marcus Maidana versus Soto Carras. 
And you know Soda Christ brings it. He always brings it. He's like a margarito kind of dude. It was a great, great fight. That was in 2013. And since then, Bordo has gotten a unanimous decision win and a knockout win on Jose Tito Lopez. This is Andre Bordo's career to the present time. And you guys downplay him because he was beaten by Robert Guerrero and Victor Ortiz. That's what you guys are doing. You're downplaying the dude. Also, Soto Carras. Okay? This is Andre Berto's career. So quickly we forget as fans the people we praised one day. And the next day, we're all making them look like they're nothing. I watched you guys. Are you downplay Sean Porter? You don't want to give him his credit for his win? I'm not saying that Sean Porter is the greatest boxer in the world. But he won against Adrian Broner. Yes, a more skilled, superior boxer to him. But he did it. And I'm amazed that people call him a bum and all kinds of crazy things. And I'm not saying that Sean Porter's style is not one in which it's not so much conducive to boxing. It's more about him just kind of bum-rushing guys and putting a lot of pressure on them, smothering them, and, and, and doing kind of ugly work. But what I'm saying is he won. And that style has gotten him as far as he's gotten. Why can't you just admit that Kell Brook was just brilliant? And Sean Porter is great. Sean Porter is one of the four kings that's going to rule the welterweight division. He may not win every single fight, but he's always going to be a difficult task for every single fighter. You guys praise guys like Jake LaMotta, but you don't praise guys like Sean Porter? Come on. But he will prove himself in time. And I, honestly, though I know that Adrian Broner lost to Sean Porter, I felt Adrian Broner lost to himself, doesn't take away from the fact that Sean Porter came down to 144 pounds to fight him and still put on that kind of performance. You got to know what you're seeing. And so it's remarkable what Sean Porter did but so quickly we forget and we downplay fighters who spent their whole careers boxing. So I just wanted to say that. You guys have a great one.